Hey, I want to talk to you uh, a little bit about church attendance now that we're six months into a serious crisis. Um, as you know, we've been back at live worship for a while. Um, I understand that there are many people uh, who, for many different reasons, health reasons and otherwise, have not been able yet to come back to church. So I hope you can hear this uh, message in the, with the pastoral heart in which I'm offering it. Um, because I realize that for some others of us who don't necessarily have the same health restrictions, it has also been slow for us to come back to live worship uh, on our campus on a Sunday morning. Part of the uh, difficulty in coming back to live worship, it seems to me, and this may you know, describe you, it may not describe you, but it seems to me that some of the difficulty in coming back to live worship kind of has to center on you know, we haven't had a consistent message from all the authorities throughout the, diff you know, throughout the different stages of the pandemic. They didn't tell you you had to wear a mask. Then they tell you suddenly it's a mandate. Then they tell you, um, well, maybe it's better if you wear a face shield or maybe it's better if you don't sing in church. And then maybe it was okay to sing in church. There have been conflicting messages all throughout this thing. And I think, you know, what that does to us as citizens who are conscientious and we want to be good citizens and we want to be good neighbors I think it becomes one of those things where it's difficult for us to know exactly what we're supposed to do at any given moment in order to be conscientious good people. You know, when you get in your car and you drive in your car, there's no debate anymore. Everybody knows that if you put on your seatbelt, it's not that you don't trust God, it's that you're just being conscientious and you're being safety conscious. And we know that putting on your seatbelt means that there are fewer people who die in car accidents. So it's no problem there. You get in your car, you put on your seatbelt. When there are conflicting messages about what we should do when it comes to COVID-19, it makes it much more difficult for folks to know, how am I being a good neighbor? How am I supposed to be a good neighbor? How am I supposed to protect myself? And when is the right time to go out? When is the right time to uh, you know, hang out with friends again? When's the right time to go back to church? I can't answer that question for you. You're gonna have to answer it for yourself. But I want to say again that throughout this entire crisis, we have remained very uh, steady in what we've said as church leadership, and that includes what I've said to you as your pastor. We have always gone with the health department mandates, but we have not exceeded those mandates. In other words, we have stayed very closely aligned with what the government has said were best practices, whether that's social distancing, setting up our worship services very differently to allow for social distancing in family groups, wearing masks when it was required, sanitizing the entire worship space between services, and we continue to do all that, y'all, okay? But I wanna invite you back to church. If you don't have um, some sort of pre-existing medical condition that would prevent you from coming back to church, I wanna encourage you to come back to church and get reconnected on the campus. Why am I so concerned about this? Well, frankly, it has to do with how you make disciples. I'm concerned for our walk of discipleship together. I can teach you online and I can continue to record my sermons, but so much of being a disciple is caught, not taught. So that means that we need our life together and the social interaction that we get at church just as much as you need the sermon, quite frankly. And for many of us, it's been five, six months since we were on campus for live worship. And I'm sharing with you a pastoral concern I have for our walk of discipleship as pastor and people together, because we're all on this road uh, home together. We're all headed towards eternal life together with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I want us to share that again um, as we are able. So if you are able, would you please prayerfully consider coming back to live on-campus worship very soon. I hope to see you there. God bless you.